So coming into tomorrow, um, again, we've got uh, some possible resistance over here. Uh, this is going to be any, this is getting to be a fairly large area now that the market has tested a couple of times. Here we've got um, 9740, whoops, 9744 up to 1.9. 800. So you, we've got this block of resistance that's starting to build right here. Uh, coming down for support uh, in the middle here again, we've got this about 60 pip range. Uh, this is 1.9669 down to 1.9600 roughly. Uh, so again, if once the market uh, gets into these areas, this is where we start looking for a trade. So I'm looking for uh, uh, trades to the downside here. Uh, if the market does trade back into our area of support, we of course looking for trades back to the upside. Uh, in both cases though, we do have possibilities for trades uh, as a, a continuation. So if, uh, for example, we see the market trading into resistance here, the way you can um, the way you can confirm that the market is um, gaining momentum to the upside is when you see this type of a pattern, this uh, triangle or pennant pattern. So if the market is going to continue to the upside, in general, what you will see is the market break out uh, and then form a pennant like this or see the market break out and form a flag. Now the same will, will go for uh, down here. Sorry, I'm getting a little distracted by the S&P. It's oh, uh, some you know, some news just hit or Nope, I don't see anything. It's just unusual for the S&P to, to be moving this this late in the aftermarket session. Uh, either way, we, if we if we do get a breakout down here, you'll probably see the same thing with the market forming either a pennant pattern here uh, or a flag. So the the most important thing to do is to wait for the market to break out and then form the pattern that's demonstrating there is some possible support. So a couple of good areas for uh, uh, some trades coming into tomorrow's session.